A cold seep sometimes called a cold vent is an area of the ocean floor where hydrogen sulfide, methane and other hydrocarbon-rich fluid seepage occurs, often in the form of a brine pool. Cold does not mean that the temperature of the seepage is lower than that of the surrounding sea water. On the contrary, its temperature is often slightly higher. The cold is relative to the very warm at least 60 degrees Celsius or 140 degrees Fahrenheit conditions of a hydrothermal vent. Cold seeps constitute a biome supporting several endemic species. Cold seeps develop unique topography over time, where reactions between methane and seawater create carbonate rock formations and reefs. These reactions may also be dependent on bacterial activity. Ichite, a hydrous calcium carbonate, can be associated with oxidizing methane at cold seeps. Topic. Types Types of cold seeps can be distinguished according to the depth, as shallow cold seeps and deep cold seeps. Cold seeps can also be distinguished in detail, as follows. Oil, gas seeps Gas seeps, methane seeps Gas hydrate seeps Brine seeps are formed in brine pools Pockmarks Mud volcanoes Formation and ecological succession Cold seeps occur over fissures on the seafloor caused by tectonic activity. Oil and methane seep out of those fissures, get diffused by sediment, and emerge over an area several hundred meters wide. Methane CH4 is the main component of what we commonly refer to as natural gas. But in addition to being an important energy source for humans, methane also forms the basis of a cold seep ecosystem. Cold seep biota below 200 meters 660 feet typically exhibit much greater systematic specialization and reliance on chemoautotrophy than those from shelf depths. Deep sea seeps sediments are highly heterogeneous. They sustain different geochemical and microbial processes that are reflected in a complex mosaic of habitats inhabited by a mixture of specialist heterotrophic and symbiont associated and background fauna. Topic chemosynthetic communities Biological research in cold seeps and hydrothermal vents has been mostly focused on the microbiology and the prominent macro-invertebrates thriving on chemosynthetic microorganisms. Much less research has been done on the smaller benthic fraction at the size of the Maya fauna during this initial stage, when methane is relatively abundant, dense mussel beds also form near the cold seep. Mostly composed of species in the genus Bathymodilus, these mussels do not directly consume food. Instead, they are nourished by symbiotic bacteria that also produce energy from methane, similar to their relatives that form mats. Chemosynthetic bivalves are prominent constituents of the fauna of cold seeps and are represented in that setting by five families, Solomidae, Leucinidae, Vesicomyidae, Thiaceridae and Mytilidae. This microbial activity produces calcium carbonate, which is deposited on the seafloor and forms a layer of rock. During a period lasting up to several decades, these rock formations attract siboglinid tubeworms, which settle and grow along with the mussels. Like the mussels, tubeworms rely on chemosynthetic bacteria in this case, a type that needs hydrogen sulfide instead of methane for survival. True to any symbiotic relationship, a tubeworm also provides for their bacteria by appropriating hydrogen sulfide from the environment. The sulfide not only comes from the water, but is also mined from the sediment through an extensive root system a tubeworm bush establishes in the hard, carbonate substrate. A tubeworm bush can contain hundreds of individual worms, which can grow a meter or more above the sediment. Cold seeps do not last indefinitely. As the rate of gas seepage slowly decreases, the shorter lived, methane hungry mussels, or more precisely, their methane hungry bacterial symbionts, start to die off. 
At this stage, tubeworms become the dominant organism in a seep community. As long as there is some sulfide in the sediment, the sulfide mining tubeworms can persist. Individuals of one tubeworm species Lamellabrachia lumaci have been estimated to live for over 250 years in such conditions. Comparison with other communities Cold seeps and hydrothermal vents of deep oceans are communities that do not rely on photosynthesis for food and energy production. These systems are largely driven by chemosynthetic-derived energy. Both systems share common characteristics such as the presence of reduced chemical compounds H2S and hydrocarbonates, local hypoxia or even anoxia, a high abundance and metabolic activity of bacterial populations, and the production of autochthonous, organic material by chemoautotrophic bacteria. Both hydrothermal vents and cold seeps show regularly, highly increased levels of metazoan biomass in association with a low local diversity. This is explained through the presence of dense aggregations of foundation species and epizootic animals, living within these aggregations. Community level comparisons reveal that vent, seep, and organic fall macrofauna are very distinct in terms of composition at the family level, although they share many dominant taxa among highly sulfidic habitats. However, hydrothermal vents and cold seeps differ also in many ways. Compared to the more stable cold seeps, vents are characterized by locally high temperatures, strongly fluctuating temperatures, pH, sulfide and oxygen concentrations, often the absence of sediments, a relatively young age, and often unpredictable conditions, such as waxing and waning of vent fluids or volcanic eruptions. Unlike hydrothermal vents, which are volatile and ephemeral environments, cold seeps emit at a slow and dependable rate. Likely owing to the cooler temperatures and stability, many cold seep organisms are much longer lived than those inhabiting hydrothermal vents. <laughs> End of cold seep community Finally, as cold seeps become inactive, tubeworms also start to disappear, clearing the way for corals to settle on the now exposed carbonate substrate. The corals do not rely on hydrocarbons seeping out of the seafloor. Studies on Lophelia pertusa suggest they derive their nutrition primarily from the ocean surface. Chemosynthesis plays only a very small role, if any, in their settlement and growth. While deepwater corals do not seem to be chemosynthesis-based organisms, the chemosynthetic organisms that come before them enable the corals' existence. This hypothesis about establishment of deep water coral reefs is called hydraulic theory. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Distribution. Cold seeps were discovered in 1983 by Charles Paul and colleagues on the Florida escarpment in the Gulf of Mexico at a depth of 3200 meters (10,500 feet). Since then, seeps have been discovered in many other parts of the world's oceans. Most have been grouped into five biogeographic provinces, Gulf of Mexico, Atlantic, Mediterranean, East Pacific and West Pacific, but cold seeps are also known from under the ice shelf in Antarctica, the Arctic Ocean, North Sea, Skagerrak, Kattegat, Gulf of California, the Red Sea, Indian Ocean, off southern Australia and in the inland Caspian Sea. With the recent discovery of a methane seep in the Southern Ocean, cold seeps are now known in all major oceans. Cold seeps are common along continental margins in areas of high primary productivity and tectonic activity, where crustal deformation and compaction drive emissions of methane-rich fluid. Cold seeps are patchily distributed and they occur most frequently near ocean margins from intertidal to hadal depths. In Chile cold seeps are known from the intertidal zone, in Kattegat the methane seeps are known as bubbling reefs, 
and are typically at depths of 0 to 30 meters 0 to 100 feet, and off Northern California they can be found as shallow as 35 to 55 meters 115 to 180 feet. Most cold seeps are located considerably deeper, well beyond the reach of ordinary scuba diving, and the deepest seep community known is found in the Japan Trench at a depth of 7,326 meters feet. Map of some cold seeps marked with a star in addition to cold seeps existing today, the fossil remains of ancient seep systems have been found in several parts of the world. Some of these are located far inland in places formerly covered by prehistoric oceans. In the Gulf of Mexico Topic discoveries The chemosynthetic communities of the Gulf of Mexico have been studied extensively since the 1990s, and communities first discovered on the upper slope are likely the best understood seep communities in the world. The history of the discovery of these remarkable animals has all occurred since the 1980s. Each major discovery was unexpected from the first hydrothermal vent communities anywhere in the world to the first cold seep communities in the Gulf of Mexico. Communities were discovered in the eastern Gulf of Mexico in 1983 using the manned submersible DSV Alvin, during a cruise investigating the bottom of the Florida escarpment in areas of cold brine seepage, where they unexpectedly discovered tubeworms and mussels. Paul et al., 1984, two groups fortuitously discovered chemosynthetic communities in the central Gulf of Mexico concurrently in November 1984. During investigations by Texas A&M University to determine the effects of oil seepage on benthic ecology until this investigation, all effects of oil seepage were assumed to be detrimental. Bottom trawls unexpectedly recovered extensive collections of chemosynthetic organisms, including tube worms and clams. Kennecutt et al., 1985. At the same time, LGL Ecological Research Associates was conducting a research cruise as part of the multi-year MMS Northern Gulf of Mexico Continental Slope Study Galloway et al., 1988. Bottom photography processed on board the vessel resulted in clear images of vesicomyid clam chemosynthetic communities coincidentally in the same manner as the first discovery by camera sled in the Pacific in 1977. Photography during the same LGL, MMS cruise also documented tube worm communities in situ in the central Gulf of Mexico for the first time not processed until after the cruise, Boland, 1986 prior to the initial submersible investigations and first-hand descriptions of Bush Hill 27 degrees 47 02 and 91 degrees 30 minutes 31 seconds west in 1986 Rossman et al., 1 987A, McDonald et al., 1989B. The site was targeted by acoustic wipeout zones or lack of substrate structure caused by seeping hydrocarbons. This was determined using an acoustic pinger system during the same cruise on the R. V. Edwin Link the old one, only 113 feet 34 meters, which used one of the Johnson C. Link submersibles. The site is characterized by dense tubeworm and mussel accumulations, as well as exposed carbonate outcrops with numerous Gorgonian and Lophilia coral colonies. Bush Hill has become one of the most thoroughly studied chemosynthetic sites in the world. Topic distribution There is a clear relationship between known hydrocarbon discoveries at great depth in the Gulf Slope and chemosynthetic communities, hydrocarbon seepage, and orthogenic minerals including carbonates at the seafloor Sasson et al., 1993 A and B. While the hydrocarbon reservoirs are broad areas several kilometers beneath the Gulf, chemosynthetic communities occur in isolated areas with thin veneers of sediment only a few meters thick. The northern Gulf of Mexico slope includes a stratigraphic section more than 10 kilometers 6 miles thick and has been profoundly influenced by salt movement. 
Mesozoic source rocks from Upper Jurassic to Upper Cretaceous generate oil in most of the Gulf Slope fields Sasson et al., 1993a and b. Migration conduits supply fresh hydrocarbon materials through a vertical scale of 6 to 8 km 4 to 5 miles toward the surface. The surface expressions of hydrocarbon migration are referred to as seeps. Geological evidence demonstrates that hydrocarbon and brine seepage persists in spatially discrete areas for thousands of years. The time scale for oil and gas migration, combination of buoyancy and pressure from source systems is on the scale of millions of years. Sasson, 1997. Seepage from hydrocarbon sources through faults towards the surface tends to be diffused through the overlying sediment, carbonate outcroppings, and hydrate deposits so the corresponding hydrocarbon seep communities tend to be larger a few hundred meters wide than chemosynthetic communities found around the hydrothermal vents of the eastern Pacific McDonald, 1992. There are large differences in the concentrations of hydrocarbons at seep sites. Roberts 2001 presented a spectrum of responses to be expected under a variety of flux rate conditions varying from very slow seepage to rapid venting. Very slow seepage sites do not support complex chemosynthetic communities, rather, they usually only support simple microbial mats Begiatoa sp. in the upper slope environment. The hard substrates resulting from carbonate precipitation can have associated communities of non-chemosynthetic animals, including a variety of sessile cnidarians such as corals and sea anemones. At the rapid flux end of the spectrum fluidized sediment generally accompanies hydrocarbons and formation fluids arriving at the seafloor. Mud volcanoes and mud flows result. Somewhere between these two end members exists the conditions that support densely populated and diverse communities of chemosynthetic organisms microbial mats, siboglinid tube worms, bathymodioline mussels, leucinid and vesicomyid clams, and associated organisms. These areas are frequently associated with surface or near-surface gas hydrate deposits. They also have localized areas of lithified seafloor, generally orthogenic carbonates but sometimes more exotic minerals such as barite are present. The widespread nature of Gulf of Mexico chemosynthetic communities was first documented during contracted investigations by the Geological and Environmental Research Group of Texas A&M University for the Offshore Operators Committee Brooks et al., 1986. This survey remains the most widespread and comprehensive, although numerous additional communities have been documented since that time. Industry exploring for energy reserves in the Gulf of Mexico has also documented numerous new communities through a wide range of depths, including the deepest known occurrence in the central Gulf of Mexico in Alaminos Canyon Block 818 at a depth of 2,750 meters 9,022 feet. The occurrence of chemosynthetic organisms dependent on hydrocarbon seepage has been documented in water depths as shallow as 290 meters (951 feet). Roberts et al. (1990) and as deep as 2,744 meters (9,003 feet). This depth range specifically places chemosynthetic communities in the deep water region of the Gulf of Mexico, which is defined as water depths greater than 305 meters 1000 feet chemosynthetic communities are not found on the continental shelf although they do appear in the fossil record in water shallower than 200 meters 656 feet one theory explaining this is that predation pressure has varied substantially over the time period involved calendar and powell 1999 more than 50 communities are now known to exist in 43 Outer Continental Shelf OCS blocks. Although a systematic survey has not been done to identify all chemosynthetic communities in the Gulf of Mexico, there is evidence indicating that many more such communities may exist. The 
Depth limits of discoveries probably reflect the limits of exploration lack of submersibles capable of depths over 1,000 meters 3,281 feet, McDonald et al., 1993 and 1996 have analyzed remote sensing images from space that reveal the presence of oil slicks across the north-central Gulf of Mexico. Results confirmed extensive natural oil seepage in the Gulf of Mexico, especially in water depths greater than 1,000 meters 3,281 feet. A total of 58 additional potential locations were documented where seafloor sources were capable of producing perennial oil slicks McDonald et al., 1996. Estimated seepage rates ranged from 4 barrels, d 0.64 cubic meters, d to 70 barrels, d 11 cubic meters, d compared to less than 0.1 barrels, d 0.016 cubic meters, d for ship discharges both normalized for 1,000 square miles 640,000 ac. This evidence considerably increases the area where chemosynthetic communities dependent on hydrocarbon seepage may be expected. The densest aggregations of chemosynthetic organisms have been found at water depths of around 500 meters (1640 feet) and deeper. The best known of these communities was named Bush Hill by the investigators who first described it, McDonald et al., 1989b. It is a surprisingly large and dense community of chemosynthetic tube worms and mussels at a site of natural petroleum and gas seepage over a salt diapir in Green Canyon Block 185. The seep site is a small knoll that rises about 40 meters 131 feet above the surrounding seafloor in about 580 m 1903 feet water depth. Topic stability According to Sasson 1997, the role of hydrates at chemosynthetic communities has been greatly underestimated. The biological alteration of frozen gas hydrates was first discovered during the MMS study entitled Stability and Change in Gulf of Mexico Chemosynthetic Communities. It is hypothesized McDonald, 1998b, that the dynamics of hydrate alteration could play a major role as a mechanism for regulation of the release of hydrocarbon gases to fuel biogeochemical processes and could also play a substantial role in community stability. Recorded bottom water temperature excursions of several degrees in some areas such as the Bush Hill site 4 to 5 degrees Celsius at 500 m 1640 feet depth are believed to result in dissociation of hydrates resulting in an increase in gas fluxes McDonald et al 1994 Although not as destructive as the volcanism at vent sites of the mid-ocean ridges, the dynamics of shallow hydrate formation and movement will clearly affect sessile animals that form part of the seepage barrier. There is potential of a catastrophic event where an entire layer of shallow hydrate could break free of the bottom and considerably affect local communities of chemosynthetic fauna. At deeper depths, greater than 1,000 meters, greater than 3,281 feet, the bottom water temperature is colder by approximately 3 degrees Celsius and undergoes less fluctuation. The formation of more stable and probably deeper hydrates influences the flux of light hydrocarbon gases to the sediment surface, thus influencing the surface morphology and characteristics of chemosynthetic communities. Within complex communities such as Bush Hill, petroleum seems less important than previously thought McDonald, 1998b, through taphonomic studies death assemblages of shells and interpretation of seep assemblage composition from cores, Powell et al., 1998 reported that, overall, seep communities were persistent over periods of 500 to 1,000 years and probably throughout the entire Pleistocene McDonald et al., 1995. A slightly longer period 19 years can be referenced in the case of Bush Hill, the first central Gulf of Mexico community described in SITU in 1986. No mass die-offs or large-scale shifts in faunal composition have been observed with the exception of collections for scientific purposes over the 19-year history of research at this site. 
All chemosynthetic communities are located in water depths beyond the effect of severe storms, including hurricanes, and there would have been no alteration of these communities caused from surface storms, including hurricanes. Biology <inaudible> 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 MacDonald et al. 1990 has described four general community types. These are communities dominated by vestimentiferin tube worms Lamellabrachia c, f, baramy and escarpia spp, mytilid mussels seep mytilid ea, ib, and 3, and others, vesicomyid clams vesicomia cordata and calyptogena ponderosa, and infonal lucinid or thiocerid clams lucinoma sp or Tiesira sp. Bacterial mats are present at all sites visited to date. These faunal groups tend to display distinctive characteristics in terms of how they aggregate, the size of aggregations, the geological and chemical properties of the habitats in which they occur and, to some degree, the heterotrophic fauna that occur with them. Many of the species found at these cold seep communities in the Gulf of Mexico are new to science and remain undescribed. Individual lamellibranched tube worms, the longer of two taxa found at seeps can reach lengths of 3 meters 10 feet and live hundreds of years. Fisher et al., 1997, Bergquist et al., 2000. Growth rates determined from recovered marked tube worms have been variable, ranging from no growth of 13 individuals measured one year to a maximum growth of 9.6 cm per year, 3.8 in per year, in a lamellibrachia individual. McDonald, 2002. Average growth rate was 2.19 cm per year, 0.86 in per year for the escarpia-like species and 2.92 cm per year, 1.15 in per year for lamellibrachids. These are slower growth rates than those of their hydrothermal vent relatives, but lamellibrachia individuals can reach lengths 2 to 3 times that of the largest known hydrothermal vent species. Individuals of Lamellibrachia sp, in excess of 3 meters 10 feet, have been collected on several occasions, representing probable ages in excess of 400 years Fisher, 1995. Vestimentiferin tube worm spawning is not seasonal and recruitment is episodic, tube worms are either male or female. One recent discovery indicates that the spawning of female lamellibrachia appears to have produced a unique association with the large bivalve Ace to bullishi, which lives permanently attached to the anterior tube opening of the tube worm, and feeds on the periodic egg release Jarnegrin et al., 2005. This close association between the bivalves and tube worms was discovered in 1984 Boland, 1986 but not fully explained. Virtually all mature ASTA individuals are found on female rather than male tube worms. This evidence and other experiments by Jarnegrin et al. 2005 seem to have solved this mystery. Growth rates for methanotrophic mussels at cold seep sites have been reported. Fisher, 1995. General growth rates were found to be relatively high. Adult mussel growth rates were similar to mussels from a littoral environment at similar temperatures. Fisher also found that juvenile mussels at hydrocarbon seeps initially grow rapidly, but the growth rate drops markedly in adults, they grow to reproductive size very quickly. Both individuals and communities appear to be very long-lived. These methane-dependent mussels have strict chemical requirements that tie them to areas of the most active seepage in the Gulf of Mexico. As a result of their rapid growth rates, mussel recolonization of a disturbed seep site could occur relatively rapidly. There is some evidence that mussels also have some requirement of a hard substrate and could increase in numbers if suitable substrate is increased on the seafloor Fisher, 1995. Two associated species are always found associated with mussel beds, the gastropod bathonarida natacoidea and a small alvinocarid shrimp, suggesting these endemic species have excellent dispersal abilities and can tolerate a wide range of conditions McDonald, 2002. 
Unlike muscle beds, chemosynthetic clam beds may persist as a visual surface phenomenon for an extended period without input of new living individuals because of low dissolution rates and low sedimentation rates. Most clam beds investigated by Powell 1995 were inactive. Living individuals were rarely encountered. Powell reported that over a 50-year time span, local extinctions and recolonization should be gradual and exceedingly rare. Contrasting these inactive beds, the first community discovered in the central Gulf of Mexico consisted of numerous actively plowing clams. The images obtained of this community were used to develop length, frequency and live-dead ratios as well as spatial patterns Rossman et al., 1987a, extensive bacterial mats of free-living bacteria are also evident at all hydrocarbon seep sites. These bacteria may compete with the major fauna for sulfide and methane energy sources and may also contribute substantially to overall production McDonald, 1998b. The white, non-pigmented mats were found to be an autotrophic sulfur bacteria Begiatoa species, and the orange mats possessed an unidentified nonchemosynthetic metabolism McDonald, 1998b. Heterotrophic species at seep sites are a mixture of species unique to seeps particularly mollusks and crustacean invertebrates and those that are a normal component from the surrounding environment. Carney first reported a potential imbalance that could occur as a result of chronic disruption. Because of sporadic recruitment patterns, predators could gain an advantage, resulting in exterminations in local populations of mussel beds. It is clear that seep systems do interact with the background fauna but conflicting evidence remains as to what degree outright predation on some specific community components such as tubeworms occurs McDonald, 2002. The more surprising results from this recent work is why background species do not utilize seep production more than seems to be evident. In fact, seep associated consumers such as galathide crabs and neurite gastropods had isotopic signatures, indicating that their diets were a mixture of seep and background production. At some sites, endemic seep invertebrates that would have been expected to obtain much if not all their diet from seep production actually consumed as much as 50% of their diets from the background. In the Atlantic Ocean Cold seep communities in the western Atlantic Ocean have also been described from a few dives on mud volcanoes and diapirs between 1,000 and 5,000 meters 3,300 to 16,400 feet depth in the Barbados accretionary prism area and from the Blake Ridge diapir off North Carolina. More recently seep communities have been discovered in the eastern Atlantic, on a giant pockmark cluster in the Gulf of Guinea near the Congo Deep Channel, also on other pockmarks of the Congo Margin, Gabon Margin and Nigeria Margin and in the Gulf of Cadiz, the occurrence of chemosymbiotic biota in the extensive mud volcano fields of the Gulf of Cadiz was first reported in 2003. The chemosymbiotic bivalves collected from the mud volcanoes of the Gulf of Cadiz were reviewed in 2011. Cold seeps are also known from the northern Atlantic Ocean, even ranging into the Arctic Ocean, off Canada and Norway. Extensive faunal sampling has been conducted from 400 and 3,300 meters (1,300 to 10,800 feet) in the Atlantic Equatorial Belt from the Gulf of Mexico to the Gulf of Guinea, including Barbados accretion. Prism, the Blake Ridge Diapir, and in the eastern Atlantic from the Congo and Gabon margins and the recently explored Nigeria margin during Census of Marine Life Chess Project. Of the 72 taxa identified at the species level, a total of nine species or species complexes are identified as Amphi Atlantic. The Atlantic Equatorial Belt Seep megafauna community structure is influenced primarily by depth rather than by geographic distance. The bivalves Bathymodialina within mytilidae species or complexes of species are the most widespread in the Atlantic. 
The Bathymodilus boomerang complex is found at the Florida Escarpment site, the Blake Ridge diapir, the Barbados prism and the Regab site of Congo. The Bathymodilus Childressi complex is also widely distributed along the Atlantic Equatorial Belt from the Gulf of Mexico across to the Nigerian margin, although not on the Regab or Blake Ridge sites. The commensal polynoid, Branchipolino sepensis is known from the Gulf of Mexico, Gulf of Guinea and Barbados. Other species with distributions extending from the eastern to western Atlantic are, gastropod cordesia provanoids, the shrimp Alvinocaris muricola, the galatheids Munadopsis gaieri and Munadopsis livida and probably the holothurid chiridota hihiva. There have been found cold seeps also in the Amazon deep sea fan. High resolution seismic profiles near the shelf edge show evidence of near surface slumps and faulting 20 to 50 meters 66 to 164 feet in the subsurface and concentrations about 500 square meters or 5400 square feet of methane gas. Several studies e.g. Amazon shelf study AMASEDS, LEPLAC, REMAC, GLORIA, Ocean Drilling Program indicate that there is evidence for gas seepage on the slope off the Amazon fan based on the incidence of bottom simulating reflections BSRs, mud volcanoes, pock marks, gas in sediments, and deeper hydrocarbon occurrences. The existence of methane at relatively shallow depths and extensive areas of gas hydrates have been mapped in this region. Also, gas chimneys have been reported, and exploratory wells have discovered subcommercial gas accumulations and pock marks along fault planes. A sound geological and geophysical understanding of the Foz do Amazonas Basin is already available and used by the energy companies. Exploration of new areas, such as potential seep sites off of the east coast of the U.S. and the Laurentian Fan, where chemosynthetic communities are known deeper than 3,500 meters (11,500 feet), and shallower sites in the Gulf of Guinea, are need to study in the future. In the Mediterranean The first biological evidence for reduced environments in the Mediterranean Sea was the presence of lucinidae and vesicomyidae bivalve shells cored on the top of the Napoli mud volcano 33 degrees 43 minutes 52 seconds north 24 degrees 40 minutes 52 seconds east. Napoli is only a name of a seamount. It locates south of Crete, located at 1,900 meters depth on the Mediterranean ridge in the subduction zone of the African plate. This was followed by the description of a new lucinidae bivalve species, Lucinoma kazani, associated with bacterial endosymbionts. In the southeastern Mediterranean, communities of polychaetes and bivalves were also found associated with cold seeps and carbonates near Egypt and the Gaza Strip at depths of 500 to 800 meters, but no living fauna was collected. The first in situ observations of extensive living chemosynthetic communities in the eastern Mediterranean Sea prompted cooperation between biologists, geochemists, and geologists. During submersible dives, communities comprising large fields of small bivalves dead and alive, large siboglinid tube worms, isolated or forming dense aggregations, large sponges, and associated endemic fauna were observed in various cold seep habitats associated with carbonate crusts at 1,700 to 2,000 meters depth. Two mud volcano fields were first explored, one along the Mediterranean ridge, where most of them were partially Napoli, Milano mud volcanoes or totally Urania, Maidstone mud volcanoes affected by brines, and the other on the Anaximander Mounds south of Turkey. The latter area includes the large Amsterdam mud volcano, which is affected by recent mud flows, and the smaller Kazan or Kula mud volcanoes. Gas hydrates have been sampled at the Amsterdam and Kazan mud volcanoes, and high methane levels have been recorded above the seafloor. Several provinces of the Nile deep sea fan have been explored recently. 
These include the very active brine seepage named the Minis caldera in the eastern province between 2,500 meters and 3,000 meters, the pockmarks in the central area along mid and lower slopes, and the mud volcanoes of the eastern province, as well as one in the central upper slope, North Alex area, at 500 meters depth. During these first exploratory dives, symbiont bearing taxa that are similar to those observed on the Olympian Anaximander mud fields were sampled and identified. This similarity is not surprising, as most of these taxa were originally described from dredging in the Nile fan. Up to five species of bivalves harboring bacterial symbionts colonized these methane and sulfide-rich environments. A new species of Siboglinidae polychaete, Lamellabrachia anaximandri, the tubeworm colonizing cold seeps from the Mediterranean ridge to the Nile deep sea fan, has just been described in 2010. Moreover, the study of symbioses revealed associations with chemoautotrophic bacteria, sulfur oxidizers in vesicomyidae and leucinidae bivalves and siboglinidae tubeworms, and highlighted the exceptional diversity of bacteria living in symbiosis with small mitolidae. The Mediterranean seeps appear to represent a rich habitat characterized by megafauna species richness e.g., gastropods or the exceptional size of some species such as sponges and crabs Chassian Mediterraneus, compared with their background counterparts. This contrasts with the low macro and megafaunal abundance and diversity of the deep eastern Mediterranean. Seep communities in the Mediterranean that include endemic chemosynthetic species and associated fauna differ from the other known seep communities in the world at the species level but also by the absence of the large size bivalve genera Calyptogena or Bathymodilus. The isolation of the Mediterranean seeps from the Atlantic Ocean after the Messinian crisis led to the development of unique communities, which are likely to differ in composition and structure from those in the Atlantic Ocean. Further expeditions involved quantitative sampling of habitats in different areas, from the Mediterranean ridge to the eastern Nile deep sea fan. Cold seeps discovered in the Sea of Marmara in 2008 have also revealed chemosynthesis-based communities that showed a considerable similarity to the symbiont-bearing fauna of eastern Mediterranean cold seeps. In the West Pacific Native aluminium has been reported also in cold seeps in the northeastern continental slope of the South China Sea and Chen et al. 2011 have proposed a theory of its origin as resulting by reduction from tetrahydroxoaluminate aluminium hydroxide minus to metallic aluminium by bacteria. <laughs> Japan. Deep sea communities around Japan are mainly researched by Japan Agency for Marine Earth Science and Technology JAMSTEC. DSV Shinkai 6500, Kaiko and other groups have discovered many sites. Methane seep communities in Japan are distributed along plate convergence areas because of the accompanying tectonic activity. Many seeps have been found in the Japan Trench, Nankai Trough, Ryukyu Trench, Sagami Bay and Suruga Bay, and the Sea of Japan. Members of cold seep communities are similar to other regions in terms of family or genus, such as Polychaeta, Lamellabrachia, Bivalavia, Solomidae, Bathymodilus in Mytilidae, Thyasuridae, Calyptogena in Vesicomyidae and so forth. Many of species in cold seeps of Japan are endemic. In Kagoshima Bay, there are methane gas seepages called tagiri, boiling. Lamellabrachia satsuma live around there. The depth of this site is only 80 meters, which is the shallowest point Siboglinidae living. L. satsuma may be kept in an aquarium for a long period in one atmosphere. Two aquariums in Japan are keeping and displaying L. satsuma. An observation method to introduce it into a transparent vinyl tube is being developed. DSV Shinkai 6500 discovered vesicomyid clam communities in the southern Mariana Forearch. 
They depend on methane which originates in serpentinite. Other chemosynthetic communities would depend on hydrocarbon origins organic substance in crust, but these communities depend on methane originating from inorganic substances from the mantle. In 2011, was performed around the Japan Trench which is epicenter of Tohoku earthquake. There are cracks, methane seepages and bacterial mats which were probably created by the earthquake. New Zealand Off the mainland coast of New Zealand, shelf edge instability is enhanced in some locations by cold seeps of methane-rich fluids that likewise support chemosynthetic faunas and carbonate concretions. Dominant animals are tube worms of the family Siboglinidae and bivalves of families Vesicomyidae and Mytilidae Many of its species appear to be endemic. Deep bottom trawling has severely damaged cold seep communities and those ecosystems are threatened. Depths down to 2,000 meters including cold seeps belongs among as yet unmapped topographic and chemical complexity of habitats. The scale of new species discovery in these poorly studied or unexplored ecosystems is likely to be high. In the East Pacific In the deep sea the COMARGE project has studied the biodiversity patterns along and across the Chilean margin through a complexity of ecosystems such as methane seeps and oxygen minimum zones reporting that such habitat heterogeneity may influence the biodiversity patterns of the local fauna. Seep fauna include bivalves of families Lucinidae, Thyaceridae, Solomidae and Vesicomyidae and Polychaetes lamellibrachia sp, and two other polychaete species. Furthermore, in these soft reduced sediments below the oxygen minimum zone off the Chilean margin, a diverse microbial community composed by a variety of large prokaryotes mainly large multicellular filamentous mega bacteria of the genera Thiaploca and Begiatoa, and of macrobacteria, including a diversity of phenotypes, protists, ciliates, flagellates, and foraminifers, as well as small metazoans, mostly nematodes and polychaetes, has been found. Gallardo et al. 2007, argued that the likely chemolithotrophic metabolism of most of these mega and macrobacteria offer an alternative explanation to fossil findings, in particular to those from obvious non-literal origins, suggesting that traditional hypotheses on the cyanobacterial origin of some fossils may have to be revised. Cold seeps pockmark are also known from depths of 130 meters in the Hecate Strait, British Columbia, Canada. Canada. Unobvious fauna also unobvious for cold seeps has been found there with these dominating species, sea snail Fusitriton oregonensis, anemone matridium gigantium, encrusting sponges and bivalve Solomia reedy. Cold seeps with chemosynthetic communities along the USA Pacific coast occur in Monterey Canyon, just off Monterey Bay, California on a mud volcano. There have been found, for example Calyptogena clams Calyptogena kilmeri and Calyptogena pacifica and foraminiferin spiroplectamina biformis. Map of cold seeps in the Monterey Bay Additionally, seeps have been discovered offshore Southern California in the Inner California borderlands along several fault systems including the San Clemente Fault, San Pedro Fault, and San Diego Trough Fault. Fluid flow at the seeps along the San Pedro and San Diego trough faults appears controlled by localized restraining bends in the faults. In the Antarctic The first cold seep was reported from Southern Ocean in 2005. The relatively few investigations to the Antarctic deep sea have shown the presence of deep water habitats, including hydrothermal vents, cold seeps, and mud volcanoes. Other than the Antarctic Benthic Deep Sea Biodiversity Project cruises, little work has been done in the deep sea. There are more species waiting to be described. <laughs> 
Topic: Detection. With continuing experience, particularly on the upper continental slope in the Gulf of Mexico, the successful prediction of the presence of tubeworm communities continues to improve, however chemosynthetic communities cannot be reliably detected directly using geophysical techniques. Hydrocarbon seeps that allow chemosynthetic communities to exist do modify the geological characteristics in ways that can be remotely detected, but the time scales of co-occurring active seepage and the presence of living communities is always uncertain. These known sediment modifications include 1. precipitation of orthogenic carbonate in the form of micronodules, nodules, or rock masses, 2. formation of gas hydrates, 3. modification of sediment composition through concentration of hard chemosynthetic organism remains such as shell fragments and layers, 4. formation of interstitial gas bubbles or hydrocarbons, and 5. formation of depressions or pockmarks by gas expulsion. These features give rise to acoustic effects such as wipeout zones, no echoes, hard bottoms, strongly reflective echoes, bright spots, reflection enhanced layers or reverberant layers. Barons, 1988, Roberts and Narauder, 1990. Potential Locations for most types of communities can be determined by careful interpretation of these various geophysical modifications, but to date, the process remains imperfect and confirmation of living communities requires direct visual techniques. <laughs> Fossilized records Cold seep deposits are found throughout the Phanerozoic rock record, especially in the late Mesozoic and Cenozoic see for example Came et al., 2008, Conti et al., 2017. These fossil cold seeps are characterized by mound-like topography where preserved, coarsely crystalline carbonates, and abundant mollusks and brachiopods. Environmental impacts Major threats that cold seep ecosystems and their communities face today are seafloor litter, chemical contaminants and climate change. Seafloor litter alters the habitat, by providing hard substrate where none was available before or by overlying the sediment, inhibiting gas exchange, and interfering with organisms on the bottom of the sea. Studies of marine litter in the Mediterranean include surveys of seabed debris on the continental shelf, slope, and bathyal plain. In most studies, plastic items accounted for much of the debris, sometimes as much as 90% or more of the total, owing to their ubiquitous use and poor degradability. Weapons and bombs have also been discarded at sea and their dumping in open waters contributes to seafloor contamination. Another major threat to the benthic fauna is the presence of lost fishing gear, such as nets and longlines, which contribute to ghost fishing and can damage fragile ecosystems such as cold water corals. Chemical contaminants such as persistent organic pollutants, toxic metals e.g., Hg, Cd, Pb, Ni, radioactive compounds, pesticides, herbicides, and pharmaceuticals are also accumulating in deep-sea sediments. Topography e.g. presence of canyons and hydrography e.g. cascading events play a major role in the transportation and accumulation of these chemicals from the coast and shelf to the deep basins, affecting the local fauna. Recent studies have detected the presence of significant levels of dioxins in the commercial shrimp Aristius antennatus and significant levels of persistent organic pollutants in mesopelagic and bathopelagic cephalopods. Climate driven processes and climate change will affect the frequency and intensity of cascading, with unknown effects on the benthic fauna. Another potential effect of climate change is related to energy transport from surface waters to the seafloor. Primary production will change in the surface layers according to sun exposure, water temperature, major stratification of water masses, for example and this will affect the food chain down to the deep seafloor, which will be subject to differences in quantity, quality, and timing of organic matter input. 
As commercial fisheries move into deeper waters, all of these effects will affect the communities and populations of organisms in cold seeps and the deep sea in general. See also Chemotroph Gas hydrate pingo